special, unique day, <laughs> this twice a year day, a holiday that we all get to sleep in. Amen? Amen. Amen. Start at noon. We're, we will start at, oh, we could start at noon. Yeah? Only on this, only on this day. We make it hungry. We make it for lunch. No, we're already here. We're we are already here. But you know what? I like that. We can make this a potluck day. A potluck noon service. Now, do we have service and then we have the potluck? Well, yeah, we all get to eat dessert. What do we eat? We'll make it. Let's, right. let's do okay. service at 11. We'll do service yes. at and then lunch. service at 11 on on uh, time like daylight savings. Remember. Daylight savings time next year. <laughs> make, make sure you write this down. I know, right? <laughs> somebody, somebody <laughs> better write it down. Somebody remind me that on daylight savings time, no, church no, at 11. No two cells. Okay. <laughs> Siri, you remind us. <laughs> I'm all, now, do we need to do it in the fall too, or is fall okay? Wait, what time? What, what time do we have? No, fall's okay. Today. today. <coughs> I know, but what's the next one? Is it October, November? Falling back is not as bad. It's not Falling back isn't the issue because we get to sleep in. Yeah. It's the spring forward. All right? But so everybody. To be fair, then we're about to start earlier than October. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. no. All right. So all y'all online, tickle your calendar that on daylight savings time next year, next year service starts at 11. Yeah. And it will be followed by a hot luck. We'll yeah. Great idea. <laughs> no, just once. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but falling back isn't the problem because you just sit here. Right? Sleeping in isn't the issue. It's getting up early, ain't it? Anyway, we're going to eat. We can have a potluck anytime we want. I mean, time is going to come back. And if we do this, it will be because we are being extending ourselves grace. Yep. Right? We are extending ourselves grace to do this. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. And because this is a day full of grace, and there's being grace extended, we haven't started because we're waiting for Hoss. <laughs> oh, let's quiet our hearts and minds. Let's prepare ourselves to receive the grace that we have been shown, that we have been given. to number 671 in your blue hymnal, number 671, let us stand and sing of amazing grace.
19 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. A penitential order, white one, page 319. In the middle of the page, bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. If it is possible for you to do so, please kneel and turn to page 317. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts to be deceived to. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Apostle John wrote, If we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer to the Hebrews adds, Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind anything that is displeasing to the Lord, and then confess what comes to your thoughts privately before we continue with our public corporate.
followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may be grafted with a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Page 324. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's word. Them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. 
But it goes to the idea that we like to think that because we are Christians and because we have been saved that we're not going to have any troubles. That we're not going to have any problems. That everything is going to be hunky and dory. And something in our Old Testament lesson jumped out at me as I was reading it. And it's the idea of this. When the Israelites realized that they had made a problem, they went to God and went to Moses and said, we've sinned before God, have mercy upon us. And God said, okay, fine. <coughs> they were being plagued by snakes. And the snakes were biting folks. God said to Moses, make a serpent, put it up on a post, so that when the people are bitten by the snakes, they can look up at the serpent on the post and they will be saved. He didn't take the serpents out of the way. He did not remove the problem. They were still going to have to deal with all the slimy creatures that were sliding around on the ground. We would like to think that God is going to remove our problems from us. That he's going to calm the storm. That he's going to do whatever we want him to do. But the reality is, is that God didn't work that way. The people were still bit by snakes, but he gave them a way through that. When they were bitten, they would look up at the snake, and that's what healed them. God doesn't always calm <coughs> the situation, but he will calm us in the midst of the situation. And in doing so, he gives us grace. What he does for us is gives us something that we don't deserve. He loves us in spite of ourselves. He loves us even though we might be walking down the wrong path. He may hit us upside the head with a tree branch and go, no, you need to turn another direction. He may tell us that all of the good things that you're doing isn't necessarily the right way, but I'm going to show you the right way to do things. Not too long ago, one of our former presidential candidates had a conversation on CNN and said that I have a great relationship with God. He explained, I like to be good. I don't like to have to ask for forgiveness. Hmm. And I am good. I don't do a lot of bad things. I don't do a lot of things that are bad. I try to do nothing that is bad. And, and therefore, I am good with God. Shortly after that, a very, 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 very wealthy individual made the following statement. He had just signed over. This guy is so wealthy. Okay, He signed over $30.7 billion dollars to a foundation to be given away. Can you imagine having enough money that you can give away 30 billion dollars? I have a hard time giving away the 50 cents in my pocket. But he gave away 30 billion dollars and said, there is more than one way to get to heaven, but this is a great way. <laughs> That's a very wealthy person and his former presidential candidate. We're not alone in their thinking about how to get to heaven. According to one statistic, 71% of Americans think that what they do plays an important role in their salvation. 
71% of us think that our works, our actions, give us an in through the pearly gates. It is my desire and hope that most of us know better. Amen? Okay. But it does beg the question, and it's per particularly pertinent on this day. What are you doing here? Sleeping. <laughs> Why did you come to church today? Yeah, to, to take a nap. To hear the word of God. To sleep. Some of you came to hear the word of God. That's good, right? <laughs> but in your list of things to do today, is this not just another box that y'all had to check off your weekly list of things to do? Now, all right, see now, Monday I gotta go to church, and Tuesday I gotta do the laundry, and Wednesday I gotta pay my bills, and Thursday I gotta go pick up the grandchildren, and Friday I get a party, and Saturday I get to deal with my hangover, and then Sunday I get to go to church again because that is what I need to do to be in good with God's graces. Some of y'all are shaking your heads, and some of you are going, oops, Father Daniel's meddling again. <laughs> Why do you read your Bible? Right? Is there some inside that says, if I do these things, that it keeps me in with God's graces. Now, truth be told, I fall into that category, right? I know that if I do certain things, that I'm going to be rewarded in a certain way. That if, if I do what I'm supposed to, if I obey the Ten Commandments, if I tithe as much as I'm supposed to tithe, if I read my Bible and I go to church, well, I got to lead church, but if I go to church, even when I'm not leading church, if I put in the work, then I will be rewarded by a place in heaven. I'm really not that much different from just about anybody else out in the world, except that I know that <coughs> all my works are as filthy rags in the cord in the presence of a holy God. The only way we get to heaven is by accepting what God has done to us through Jesus. For by grace you have been saved. It is by grace that I have been saved. And grace indicates there is nothing that I did to earn it. None of my actions up until the point in time when I gave up and gave in did anything for me to get to heaven. But when I realized that I could not do it on my own and accepted the free gift. <coughs> For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is a gift from God. But we have a hard time receiving unmerited gifts. We have a really hard time just accepting something without having to contribute to the process. We like to have a transactional relationship with God. If I do this for God, God's going to do something for me. If I work really hard for God, God's going to give me favor. Because we treat God like we treat the relationships that we have with each other. If I'm really good and I get up every morning and I make coffee for my wife 
every single morning of the year, 365 days of the year, regardless of whether I feel like it or not, I get up and I give my wife coffee. Amen? Amen. <laughs> 366 in a leap year. Even when I'm not home, I make sure she's got coffee. That if I do that every single day, then she's going to smile at me every once in a while. If I do what I'm supposed to absolutely every single day of the year, then I'm not going to get yelled at by my parish administrator. No, he's going to yell at me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if I contribute to the equation, then I'm going to get something back out of the equation. That's how we work in the West. That's how a whole lot of the world works. If we do something, we will get something. <coughs> but what God is offering us is something that we can't do anything to or for. All we have to do is accept. And the harder part of this equation is, is that what God has offered us came at considerable expense to himself. So that we can receive. 
receive that grace so that we might be saved. Please bow your heads with me. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty God and Father, we thank you for your gift of grace. Help us to receive it. Help us to acknowledge it. Help us to understand we don't deserve it, we couldn't earn it, we didn't ask for it. All we have to do is accept it. That amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. May we do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 326, in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm what we know to be true, as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God. The Father of the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism with the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Healing. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world.
Daniel and Scott, our priests, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. Ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, for Joe, our president, and Greg and Michelle, our governor. Pray for justice and peace. Ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. This morning we pray for Baby Bates, Ashley, Beth, Brenda, Joy, Magdalene, David, Stephanie, Dresden, Sonny, Rick, Peyton, Pamela, Anthony, Selena, Stacy, Sheena, Samantha. We also pray for the pre repose of the soul of Michael Craig. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity on the Hill in Los Alamos, St. Jerome in Chama, and St. Stephen in Espanola. I ask for prayers for those who put themselves in harm's way to protect us, first responders, healthcare professionals, educators, and students. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that we may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgiving at this time, either silently or loud. Hope for George and Pat. Pray for those who don't know Jesus. We pray for Stephanie's upcoming surgery. She said it will go without complication. Pray for Jackson. For healing for Bridget. who are being affected by the wildfire in northern Texas and the adverse weather sweeping across the southeast. Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn.
turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. things that we found when we were working at the fire station, we were getting our local fire district number 14, Santa Teresa, up and operational. We found a whole flat of 9-volt batteries. And the reason we find all these 9-volt batteries is when you change your clocks twice a year, that's always a good time to change the batteries in your carbon monoxide and your smoke detectors. We have enough batteries here, we think, for everybody. Now, originally, they were going to be back in the parish hall for you to grab, but we notice that there are some members of the congregation who never see the parish hall after church. They come, dine, and dash. <laughs> so, what we've done is we've moved the batteries into here so that after you have finished dining at the table, before you dash out the door, pick up enough batteries for you to change all the batteries in your smoke detectors. And the neighbors. Check them out for your neighbors. Grab, grab a couple of more than you think you need and go to your neighbors and say, hey, when was the last time you changed the battery in your smoke detector? You can tell which neighbors need to do that because when you walk into their house, you hear it. Beep. 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 Okay? Grab some batteries and change as a gift and as a courtesy and as a good thing to do. The other thing that we have found during our spring cleaning is we found a whole ream of these very beautiful posters of St. Luke's. These were made in commemoration of the 20th Annual Country Fair back in 2004. Okay? Um, I don't want to throw them away. Uh, I would much rather you throw, uh, put them in your house. So please, uh, grab some if you want to know. You know, they'd be suitable for framing in your prayer closet. Um, They'd make nice wrapping paper for gifts. Uh, we got a bunch of them here. Please take them with. Yes, ma'am. We could just sell them or, for a dollar or two at the country fair. We could, and we've tried, and we have more at the end of the country fair than we did at the beginning of the country yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> What's another name for a prayer room? A war room. Okay. Uh, we, what was another name for the prayer room? It's called the war room. It's where you go and do that. It's a prayer closet. Or a prayer closet. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, actually, we, I know that we're not going to get rid of all these posters between now and our next country fair. So we will have them for sale. And we'll sell them for a penny apiece. That way we just... <laughs> they just need to go. Um, birthdays and anniversaries. Nope. Okay. A lot of stuff coming up here real quick. 
Because in like a minute from now, we are into Holy Week. And Holy Week's very busy for us. Uh, we're going to have a passport again this year. And the passport that we have, uh, if you make it to all of the events during Holy Week, there will be a reward for those who have completed their passports. It will include things like Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Crystal Ray, Good Friday service, uh, helping to clean the church on Saturday, and then Easter service. So if you make it to everything, we will make something, we will give you something that will be actually worth your while. Yes. You the posters? Yeah. <laughs> In addition to the poster. <laughs> It'll be wrapped in a poster. It'll be old. <laughs> or the poster, either that or the poster will wrap it. Anything else for the good of the congregation? I think it was Diane Ferris' birthday, but she's not here. Yeah, well, we, we, we prayed for her. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, I remember on Facebook. Her and prayed. Peyton, who I'm celebrated her 16th birthday. Um, keep Richard and his family in prayers. Richard's younger brother died very unexpectedly this week. And so they are contending with that grief. Uh, so keep them in your prayers. Oh, we appreciate it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, and Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may kneel or remain standing. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel commandments to continue our perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for me for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and may 
together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God to the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host. We are his guests. The table is open to any who are hungry. All who are thirsty are welcome to receive from this table.
May the peace of God who passes understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Uh, before our final song, one note that came to mind. We will not be having our Lenten study this week as Jane and I are going to be heading up to Albuquerque to help tend to our daughter while she's going through rotator cuff repair surgery. So no Lenten study this week. Please stand. Thanks be God. Bye. See you.